went through the first part of the exhibit, but it broke. So luckily we're gonna go get brunch and then come back and finish it. <laughs> up with Van Gogh and we're heading home but first we're going to go to the grocery store. I need to get some ingredients and recipes I am going to make for work this week. I am about to get started on our dinner and since we had a lot of like heavier delicious food this morning I personally am craving something a little bit on the lighter side so I'm going to make some soup which is perfect because I just made some homemade veggie broth yesterday I'm going to be making a riff on my feel-good red lentil soup I'll link it below but we've got some red lentils and that recipe calls for carrots but I think I'm going to do butternut squash instead and just to add a little extra something we got like a tiny bit of quinoa left in this bag so I'm just gonna toss it in there as well Hey there, it's been a while uh, since the clips you just saw, but I thought since that video was on the shorter side, it would be a good chance to incorporate another tea time. The sun is setting and the light looks really pretty, but I feel like I have to squeeze into this narrow um, column and I'm kind of underexposed. So I think I'm gonna move and then we'll continue our chat. Let's see, this is not great either. I am sitting on stone for you definitely not my most comfortable option but this lighting seems to be the safest choice so the last time i filmed a diet chat was about two years ago in this video which is why i thought we were due for a little update though honestly i feel like my diet has pretty much stayed the same i am vegan and i still practice intuitive eating if you're not familiar with the concept or like the nitty gritty details of it i definitely suggest checking out that video i'll have it linked below so in the most basic terms it's just listening to my cravings and giving my body what I want when I want it. Obviously there are more nuances and I'm just sharing my personal experience, but I'll also link a few dietitians who specialize in intuitive eating below if you want to learn more about it from an expert. Honestly, the greatest thing about intuitive eating for me has been the realization that my diet does not need to be compared to anyone else's. It doesn't need to look like anyone else's. The only thing that matters is that I am happy with it. And no, that doesn't mean eating healthy food all the time. As you could just see in the last video, Dylan and I were really hungry around brunch time and I was craving a lot of food and all the food looked really delicious. So we ordered a lot. I ate until I was a little past full, which is cool because I was just hungry for longer. We took our leftovers home with us. And then I was craving simpler foods throughout the day and didn't need to eat as much because I ate a lot in the beginning. And you know, it's all about balance and it's not even in a single day scope. I feel like it's easy to hyper-focus on one day of someone's life and what they eat, but it's really about what you do over weeks, months, years. So that being said, eating French toast one day, not really gonna have a big impact on your life in terms of health, but you know what it will have an impact on? Your overall joy. And that French toast was incredibly delicious. Look, I'm not here to give a sermon or tell you you need to change your life, you need to change your diet. I do feel like 
when people say with intuitive eating, I eat what I want when I want it, there are a few misconceptions. So I thought it'd be cool to briefly chat about them. The first one, which maybe came to your mind is, oh, if I let myself eat what I want all the time, I would eat donuts or French toast every single day. And I feel like that comes from a more restrictive mindset because trust me, before I really embodied or practiced the principles of intuitive eating, I definitely thought that too, but that was because I was restricting myself from those foods. So when I finally allowed myself to have them, I would eat much more than I needed to and I would feel like I couldn't stop. But when you practice food freedom, you know that you have access. Oh my God, my cat is climbing, getting bread. Yes! He literally jumped up onto my floating shelf to get this bag and try to pull the out. So I'm just gonna put it there. It's not sponsored. So when you approach food with the mindset of, I can have this whenever I want, it doesn't come from a scarcity mindset. So when I want pancakes, I eat them and I feel satisfied. And guess what? I move on with my life and don't think about pancakes for a while until I want them again. And you know, sometimes that might be one day if it's the weekend and I'm craving brunch again, but oftentimes at this point in my diet, it's like weeks. So I'm like, wow, those pancakes are so good. I feel satisfied. Now I just want a smoothie. And that I feel like is the essence of intuitive eating. It's just being stress-free with your food choices, enjoying them and not overthinking or ruminating about on them or like telling yourself you can't have a food because it's quote unquote bad for you or you've eaten X or eaten Y. If you let yourself enjoy the food until your cravings are satisfied, you aren't gonna think about it anymore and you're gonna have so much more time in your life to do things that are actually interesting versus worrying about food, which from my experience, isn't that interesting or enjoyable. And guess what? I also crave healthy foods too. Yeah, sometimes I crave pancakes or French toast or sometimes I wake up, I do a workout and I'm like, wow, that was a really great workout. I'm going to make a smoothie with some protein powder to help my muscles recover and get my day started. Or if I do have pizza or whatever for one night or two nights or whatever, I'm like, yeah, I really want some vegetables now. I feel like that will make me feel good. Like when you actually listen to your body, know how certain foods make you feel and know the joy other foods bring you, it's so much easier to find a balance with it and the balance that works, remember, for you not anyone else. The second thing that I want to briefly touch on is that most people say, oh, well, if I let myself eat whatever I wanted to, I would gain weight. And I mean, maybe you would, but if you're truly listening to your body and honoring your cravings and eating a balanced diet and you gain weight, like maybe that's the healthy set point that your body is supposed to be at. Obviously there's a lot of external pressure, maybe just from society, social media, or your family or friends, which can happen, although it's unfortunate. So I'm not the expert in your life. And I will say I have thin privilege. I don't live in a larger body that is like marginalized or discriminated against, but I do believe that people can be healthy at every size. And it really just depends on your personal life choices and like your body, your biology, and your environment. There are very few things in life that we can control with so many external factors, etc. But you can control your relationship with food. It's just you and the food. And uh, I know it can seem intimidating, I know it can seem hard, but honestly, based on my, I would say, unhealthy relationship with food in the past, having a healthy relationship with food and putting in the time, putting in the work has been one of the most freeing and liberating things I have ever done for myself. Yeah, I eat a pretty balanced diet now. I don't really restrict any food groups. Obviously I live a vegan lifestyle, so I'm not out here eating non-vegan food because ethically that's important to me. But if it's vegan, I eat it. I know in the past I used to not eat sugar or oil or gluten because this and that and this person told me and whatever, but like, you know, it's all really delicious in moderation and I'm enjoying it. And honestly, I feel the best that I have felt in a long time because health is, so much more than the food we put on our plate. It's about how we sleep, the environment we're living in, our mental health is so important. So I feel like a lot of us hyperfixate on one small thing when it's better to, you know, take a deep breath, let it go, don't stress about the small stuff and try to look at the bigger picture. Anyways, take care of yourself, know that you are loved and so deserving of love and 
I also think you deserve to have a beautiful, full, and happy life. So go do that. And that hopefully I'll see you soon virtually in a future video. Bye.